for us as Hawaiians, the land, the mountains, the seas, it's truly spiritual. Akua, he gave us this. It's a gift from God. The reef on Mokai is extremely unique. I spent lots of time in my childhood fishing and diving on that reef. This is a really amazing place, but it's at risk right now. It's at risk of being lost. Molokai has been known historically as a place of abundance. And that's what we're working to restore. The ultimate goal for this project is to be able to build 3D models of the seafloor and of the coral reef, and then map those in a way where you can keep track of that data over time. It's giving us tools to show people the impacts from mountain to the ocean. Aloha, my name is Kalai Ellis. I grew up in Honolulu on Oahu, but my grandmother is actually from the homestead here on Molokai. It's truly like no other place. This is the last place of the old Hawaii. And we want to try to keep it this way. Molokai actually has the largest fringing reef in the whole United States. For generations, residents here have fought to protect the island and their way of life. But they know that Molokai is changing and that the reef is at risk. When we were young, this is all white sand. We could walk 100 yards and fill up one bucket of crab. You know, you can see the impact. So what we're seeing right now on Molokai is a big increase of sediment runoff being deposited right onto the reefs. And when it gets into the reef, the reef is too muddy to fish. The fish die, the reef dies. Coral reefs are one of the most threatened ecosystems in the world. This is where the vast majority of the diversity exists. These are the rainforests of the ocean. The people who live there, they know what's happening. They see the changes, they've experienced them. So they approached us at BYU saying, can you help us integrate some of the newest technologies in ecological research to assess status of the land and ocean? Aina Momona is a native Hawaiian organization founded by activist Walter Ritty. As a young man, Uncle Walter was taught by my great-grandmother one of the kupuna, or wise elders on the island. That's really strong family ties because his grandmother was our teacher. When BYU came, he was here to help us. So it was like, yes, let's work together. Let's do this. The whole idea was to map out a watershed, to look at the reefs. And I knew that this was my chance to try to start making a difference. Native Hawaiians are sustainability experts. They understand that Mauka, the mountain, and Makai, the ocean, are connected. They manage their land in very careful and thoughtful and sustainable ways. So the Ahupua'a system, is, it shows us how to sustainably manage the connection between land and water. There's a lot we can learn. Right now in science, they like to call it the ridge to reef, looking at the whole system from top to bottom the connection between land and water. You feel it very strong, especially when you're on an island, you know, uh, Hawaii, Samoa, Tonga, because, you know, that's our food resources. What happens in the ocean is a byproduct of what happens on land. And what happens on land is heavily influenced by the ways that it's being managed. So in our efforts to figure out what we're gonna do in Mauka, in order to protect Makai, we needed information. What they asked us to do is to survey in high precision what was happening on the mountainside as well as where sediment was being deposited in the reef. So if we capture at that moment the conditions of uh, the reef, uh, we can come back in like two and three years and run the same model. And then in that way, we see what's going on in the reef. It becomes the complex dual process of being able to do terrestrial surveys and marine surveys using different technologies. And so we reached out to the College of Engineering to develop some new technologies that were effectively aquatic drones. So the vehicle we've built is able to autonomously navigate from waypoint to waypoint. 
I mean, we're trying to implement a robot to replace what a human has issues doing consistently. We're able to follow a straight path and it's able to correct for the current, correct for the wind, and we can track exactly where it's been. And then it has a RTK GPS. It has a stereo camera and a water quality sensor. The ultimate goal for this project is to build 3D models of the seafloor and of the coral reef and be able to map those in a way where you can keep track of that data over time. So we finally got it tested out in Hawaii. We couldn't have asked for a better, more perfect day. Seeing the fish, seeing the dolphins. Going out, putting the boat in the water, seeing the autonomous rover work its magic. We came out on the perfect day, so the water was super clear. The wind was super low, so our robot was able to function. We were able to see lots of cool stuff, like the turtles were very interested in our robots and kept peeking at them. Seeing the data, seeing the pictures pop up. We got tons and tons of data, 20,000 plus images of these reefs that we can use for years to come. And it was just amazing that this autonomous rover was able to create a 3D model that we can revisit without having to go out on a boat. This just made this data, all of this information, so much more accessible to the broader public. Ultimately, the goal of this is to produce a technology that will allow us to survey much larger areas and produce higher quality information for people to make decisions on how to conserve. We're learning how to rely on each other in order to survive. We're looking for how do we survive on little dots of islands in the middle of the vast Pacific continent. In the early goings, it's really important to have people outside of us to understand what is happening and what we need to do. Every level of understanding helps us to better prepare to adapt to the changes that we know are coming and to form our strategies around that. Everybody came together. They came with drones and they came with technology. So we have a really strong foundation that gives me, you know, a lot of hope. When people come to Molokai, they are inspired by the passion and the motivation of individuals and by the complexity of the problems that exist in the world that need the tools that our students are developing at BYU. And that's the main reason why I left my home country is special education because that's one of the key factors that you can take home and use it to protect the ocean. It enables students to see how the research we do can, can enable us to be able to serve people um, and also to integrate with people and, and learn from them as they learn from us. It both sort of takes their learning and inspires them to apply it and it takes the spirit and it teaches them how important they are in providing solutions.